Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a repeating pattern using oval shapes in Illustrator. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's have a look and see the pattern that we're going to be making. And it's this pattern here. Now, we're going to be using the Pattern Make tool in Illustrator, which was new in Illustrator CS6 and has continued to be in Illustrator CC and Illustrator CC 2014. The starting point for this pattern, however, is not just a single shape. We're going to have to build the four shapes that we are then going to build into the pattern. And to do that, we're going to learn how to create grids inside Illustrator. And that's a little bit different to using grids, for example, in Photoshop. So this is the kind of pattern that we're looking at creating, something that has one shape running down the diagonal and a second shape running down a second diagonal alongside it. So let's get started. To get started creating our pattern, I'm going to create a brand new document. So I'm going to choose File and then New. I'm making my document just 250 points by 250 points in size. And then I'm going to set the color mode to RGB. And that's all I need to do in this dialog here. And I'm just going to click OK. Now, I don't like my documents tabbed like this one is. So I'm just going to resize this and float it. So. This makes my life a little bit easier. And when I have a document looking like this, if I press Control-0, everything just squares up, centralizes, and shrinks down so that I can see everything nice and neatly. Now we're going to add some guides. So I'm going to start by choosing View and then Rulers, because I want to see both rulers here, the vertical and the horizontal ruler. Now, if you're familiar with this process in Photoshop, you'll know that you can just grab hold of the ruler and just drag in to create a guide. But it's really difficult for me to see right now that this is at 50, and I want my guide at 50. So I'm just going to let go. And let's go and have a look at the Layers palette, because unusual in Illustrator is how it actually creates guides, because a guide is actually a shape. So let's just go into open up this layer and you'll see that this guide is actually in this layer. So we can then move the guide, but to move it we first have to unlock the guides. So let's go to View and let's go to Guides and let's go to Lock Guides. We'll just make sure that there's no check mark against this. So we don't have a check mark, so mine are already unlocked, but you want to make sure that yours are unlocked because otherwise you won't be able to do the next step. So what I'm going to do then is go to the Selection tool and click on this guide. And when I do, I get all the measurements across the top of the screen. And what I want to do is make sure that this guide is in 50 points. So I'm just going to type 50 in here. This is its x-axis, which is the x distance in from the left of the screen. So that's perfect. I don't care about the other values. So now let's go and drag a second one. And I want this to be over here but I want it to be at 200 points. So I'm just going to type in 200. And then from the top down, I'm going to drag one in, and I want this to be down from the top 50 points. So this time, I'm looking at the Y value. So I'm just going to set that to 50. And then I'm going to drag a second one down, and this is going to be at 200. Again, it's Y value. Now let's press Control-0 to see our design again. So you can see that what I've done is to add guides that are 50 points in from either side of my shape. My shape being 250 by 250 points in size. This one's in 50, this one's in 200, which makes it 50 from this side. So it's just simple mathematics. Now I want this because I want to be able to put my shapes in these positions because it's going to make my repeating pattern just so much easier to create. So let's go now and let's create an oval. So I'm just going to grab the ellipse tool and I'm going to click on here. So I'm going to start my drawing at the intersection here because that's going to be dead center. So I'm just going to start dragging. But of course, when I drag, the shape is not actually centered over that starting point, but it is if I add the Alt or Option key, which I've just done. So I've added the Alt key, because I'm working on a Windows machine. But if you're on a Mac, you'll add the Option key. And I'm just dragging to create my starting shape. And this is going to be the size of the shape I'm going to use. So I'm just going to let go of the left mouse button and then let go of the Alt or Option key. 
Now let's go and fill this shape. We'll just give it a starting fill color. So let's just go and get a color. I'm going to make it sort of a lighter brown. Now I don't want to stroke on this because this is my first pattern piece. Click on the selection tool and then click on the object so it's selected. I'm going to choose edit copy and then edit paste in place. And you can see here that I can see that the keys that I can press in future are shift control and V. And on a Mac it's going to be shift command and V. So I'm just going to press that once and now I'm going to the keyboard shift control V and I'm going to press that twice more. And in the layers palette you can see now I have four shapes and they're all stacked on top of each other. So I'm going to grab the first one and I'm just going to move it so it snaps into position diagonally opposite the starting shape. And I'm going to do the same with each of the others. They're all going to be positioned so that they intersect over the very top or well, the center of them intersects with the lines that I've drawn. So there are my four shapes. It's just that they're not colored correctly yet and they're not rotated. So let's say that this is the pair that are going to be rotated. So I'm just going to click on the shape and I'm going to double click the rotate tool. And I just want to rotate this through 90 degrees and just press OK. And I'm going to do the same down here. Click on the shape, double click the rotate tool, rotate 90 degrees, click OK. So this is basically my pattern piece. So now to recolor the shapes, I'm going to select both the shapes that I want to recolor and then let's just click on the fill color and choose a different color. And I'm going to use a sort of olive green and click OK. So now we've got the four shapes that we're going to work with for our pattern. I need to make sure that I select only the shapes because you can't make a pattern for the grid lines. So since I don't need them any longer, I'm just going to hide the guides and then I'm just going to select on all of these shapes that I can see. Now all four are selected, we can go ahead and create our pattern. And we do that by choosing Object and then Pattern, Make. I'm just going to click OK to accept the dialog. And what we get now is the ability to create our pattern. And we're just going to select Grid as the tile type. And then we just need to set up the width. Now if you've used the same dimensions as I used, then we're just going to double the space between those grid lines. So we had a grid at 50 and then we had another grid at 200. So if we subtract 50 from 200, we have 150. So that tells us that there's a space of 150 between the centers of these two objects. And what we need to do is to just double that. So I'm going to type in here that the width is 300, which is twice 150, and so too is the height. And that creates our pattern for us. So now that we've done that, all we need to do is to click Done. Now the pattern is added automatically to the swatches panel. So I'm just going to bring the swatches panel over here and we'll be able to see the new pattern in the swatches panel. Now, we can't use that in any other document because it is attached to this particular document. So first of all, we need to click the pattern swatch and then I need to click this little down pointing arrow here and choose Save Swatch Library as AI. So I'm just going to click there and I'm going to call this Oval Pattern. It's an AI swatch file, so I'll just click Save. And Illustrator is going to take care of saving that in the user-defined preset. So now I can just close this document. I don't even need to save it because the pattern is now saved for us. So let's go and use the pattern in a new document. So I'm going to choose File New. And this time I'm going to make a document that is 1,000 by 600 points in size. Again, RGB and click OK. I'm going to create a rectangle that is the size of the artboard. Now if you check out my other videos, you'll see that I have a script that I usually use for doing this, but today I'm just going to draw it out myself. I'm going to click on the rectangle tool here and now I'm just going to drag out a rectangle that is the size of the artboard. And what I need to do is to fill this with my pattern. But you can see here that the pattern isn't in the swatches, so we have to go and actually add it to the swatch panel. So I'm going to click the down pointing arrow here. We're going to open a swatch library. We're going to use a define, and you can see here is our oval pattern. So I'm just going to click it to 
select it and here's the swatches panel from that other document and here is our pattern. So I'm just going to click on it and the pattern is automatically added to this rectangle. Now if we want to, for example, fill in the background of a document using this pattern and we want smaller shapes, well that's easy too. With the rectangle selected I'm going to choose Object and then Transform and we're going to choose Scale. We don't want to scale the object because we want the object the rectangle to stay consistent in size but we do want to transform the pattern and we would like to see things as we do so. So now all I'm going to do is come in here and decrease the scale. And I can do that very fast by holding the shift key as I click the down arrow key or I can just use the down or up arrow key to go in smaller quantities. So I'm just going to size the pattern to the size I wanted and click OK. So this is how you create a more varied pattern in Illustrator. This one has elements that are along the diagonal. And to do it, we start out by creating the four elements that are repeated throughout this pattern. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released and visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.